Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to paint a blue painting. We don't often paint in blue, um, but I thought I would and I'm also going to do it in a very unusual format, which is to use, uh, I'm going to use one of these A5 uh, sketchbooks. This is a Viviva one. Um, and uh, I've got lots of paintings in there that I've already shared with you. Um, but I'm going to paint across the pages, so join two pages together, in order to have a, uh, a different format. And it's just for the heck of it. There's no deep, meaningful reason. I just thought I fancied doing that, because it's different. And um, the only snag is, of course, it's going to be a little bit tricky to film it um, in the usual way. But if I turn my pad like this, we should, we should be able to do something. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Maybe if I move this up a little bit, we can see. So I'm going to use, as usual, my Kuretake colours. And the reason for that is because they're the brightest ones I've got and they tend to look best um, on the screen. You could just as easily, though, use ordinary um, paints and the colours I'm going to be using will be ultramarine and phalo blue and perhaps a bit of cobalt blue. Um, those are the blues I'll be using. I'm also going to use my Poetique brush pens and I've selected some colours that I'm planning to use. Um, a couple of dark greens. This one is ink green, uh, lemon green and bronze green. And then a couple of blues. Um, blue, black, and that says that's ink green. That, oh yeah, that's right, blue, black, and here it is, night blue. So those are the, the colours. Obviously the greens are to do with leaves and the blues are to do with finishing off the flowers with some line work. Uh, oh yes, a pair pencil, not a pencil, a brush. This is a Drawwell Maestro. It could just as easily be a um, um, Aqua Elite from Princeton, which I like. Uh, I prefer that to the Neptune. This is the Neptune one. I haven't tried the, um, Ellen, Ellen Crimmy Trent was talking about brushes yesterday and I was watching her video. There's another um, Princeton brush, which I haven't tried. Uh, so I should probably get some of those and see what they're like. But the Neptune, I find a little bit too soft. Um, the Aqua Elite, I like, it's about the right. Um, hardness for me. Everybody's different though, but this, Tamsin bought them for me for Christmas and um, I I, th I think uh, she bought me this and this, this type and this type and uh, to see which, which ones we preferred and uh, we definitely prefer the Aqua Elite. Okie dokie. So um, let's get started on this. Um, like I said, I'm going to use some blues. This is all blues in here. There's lots of blues, lots and lots of blues. Uh, so I'm not going to take them out. I'm going to leave them there and I'll tell you which ones I'm using when I when I get to them. And I'm going to start at the top and um, I have done a practice of this, so I have a rough idea what I'm going to do. Um, so we'll see what happens. I should probably sit down for this because, you know, uh, it's hard on the old interior, isn't it? So I'm just going to put some loose strokes there and then I'm going to pick up some dark blue and um, try and do a stem. And I'm deliberately, deliberately, yes, deliberately trying to make it shaky and not neat. Okay, and I'm deliberately going to waste a lot of paint as well, because why not? Um, okay, so we'll go from that colour to maybe this colour, and I'm just going to slap it on here. Blue can be quite calming, but it doesn't have to be. It can be quite exciting as well. 
So then I've gone back to my um, navy blue or Payne's grey, whatever that wants to be called. And I'm just putting in a, a, a dark area there. Then I'm going to draw the stem down a bit like that. And my feeling here was that we would try, try for um, graphic, graphic, because blue, I was going to say, blue is, um, what, blue is a receding colour, it's um, not a particularly warm colour, and I'm going to kill that cat, just joking, not seriously. Um, Oriel, get down. He got down. Uh, thank you, Oriel. Uh, let's put another one down here and put some lighter blue on the outside of that. Let it run. That wasn't what I had in mind, but that's what we've got. And then we'll have another one here with a bit more dark in the middle. Okay, I'm just hoping that you can see all of this. Yeah. So we'll put some more stems coming down. And then let's put something over here. You never know what's going to happen. And I'm going to put some something thin and spindly up here. And then down the bottom, we'll switch to green. And I'm going to put uh, just go straight over that join. Here we go, here's the rain. And let's have one coming across here. I found myself standing up again. Silly. Let's put some nice uh, leaves on this stem here. What did Ellen call that? A combination stroke. I never, never knew that had a name. I think that's what she said. Okay, and I'm going to add some blue to the green and put Nice one across here. See how much water the brush holds. You don't have to keep on refilling and you'll get a variety of tone. And then this one I wanted to just do thin Something like that. And then maybe some more um, little blue ones up here. It's 
something dark in the center of these two. And then once this is dry, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Once this is dry, we can come in with the pen and uh, do some line work on there to bring the whole thing into some semblance of order. So I will just go and get the hair dry. So let's start at the top with um, these and I'm just going to do some sort of circular oval, oval lines here on those. Just whatever you feel like really. And um, then, uh, so that was, uh, what color was that? That was night blue. Then I'm going to add a little bit of something, a little bit vibrant here, some of this lime. I'm gonna put that on a couple of these others as well. Don't need very much. Now, um, this one, I, th I think, needs a bit of floofy. It's kind of a, a bit like a hydrangea, isn't it? This one, let's uh, let's just do some. Try to just lightly touch the paper as lightly as I can. And then we can sort of put in more details if we want. Sharpen that up a bit if we feel we need to. Leave it alone if you think that'd be better. You can draw in a stem if you've lost a stem. So this one is coming down the back there and this is almost exactly the same color. So strange how that is. But there we are, so that's that. This one over here, I don't know. Just put a little bit of dark in there from place to place. And um, this one here, Maybe I'll change the color to the other blue to this one. It's even darker. It's very abstract, completely uh, loose. And we can um, Add some shadow on one side of these leaves or the vein, just to sharpen them up if you want. You can leave them the way they were if you want. But these I want to also make a bit more pointed. darker. I really like using these. I find them very liberating and they go very well with the Kurataki colours. I suppose it's kind of mixed media. Something like that. Put some darks into some of the stems in some places if you feel you need it, into some of the leaves, just add a bit more dark. It's very controllable, much more controllable than pure watercolor. So that's what I'm liking about this is putting in, where's my dark green, ink green, yeah. Um, that's what I'm liking about this is that you can 
Be really free with your watercolour, not worrying about getting things accurate. And then you can pick up these gorgeous pens with their lovely soft pointy brush points and just flick stuff in and you do still have to wait for it to dry to get the full effect because when when I finished adding all these darks it will look quite dark but then you've still got the option ah hands going numb of um, putting in white if you can find your white so we want some and you could if you wanted to also at this point uh, you could do doodles this painting could go anywhere really but if you if you feel it's a bit too dark you can put in some lights using the white pen quite like the way that breaks when when it's not quite dry and you use this gel pen you get this kind of circle and you can do some dots you could do lines all the way down some of your leaves if you wanted to these ones could probably do with stems and veins added to as much or as little as you want depending on what your personal taste is and are we nearly finished probably might be i'm going to dry that and then come back and see what i think okay so that's dry and i think um i've picked up the lemon lemon green and i'm just going to add a few little bits of that because i put some up the top there and I always feel that um, a painting should have a colour. If it has a bright colour like that in one place, then it needs it probably somewhere else as well. So I'm not quite sure exactly where to put it, but um, I'll add it to some of these where there's little bits of light there. And hopefully that'll do the trick. And um, the other thing I want to do as well is this... Where's my ink green? These leaves here are too light, I have decided. Um, nothing wrong with them particularly, but they're too light compared, to, they're the same as these ones. So I'm just going to darken them a bit with this very obliging pen. Um, and then when I've done that, and darken the stem a little bit too. And I've done that. Uh, or you can also, another thing here, if you've got some that are a bit of a funny shape, still, you can, you know, knock them into shape. Tell them what's what, give them a smack. Say, so don't lie around looking like nothing on earth. Shape yourself up. Shape yourself up, yes. Um, okay, and then we need to bring in some white. So I'll have to dry that. White picks up what's underneath. So it doesn't turn out to be completely white. And then um, the other thing is having done that, you then notice that these are a bit too light. And this is something you could play around with indefinitely. And usually I don't bother. I just go, okay, that'll do. We were laughing about that the other day, you know, 
I'm like, Tam's saying, nothing's ever finished for you because it's always got to be perfect. And she's like, yeah, but you're a that'll do kind of person. You know, it's not perfect. That'll do. Yes, well, I suppose the world does divide into two categories of people. The ones that say, I'll never do it because I can't make it perfect. And those of us who say, oh, that'll do. <laughs> it's good enough, it's done. Done is better than not done. Sometimes. i put a few more in here. Don't you enjoy doing these leaves? I do. I could do leaves all day long. Right. Okay, I'm going to stop now because it's dinner time. So there we are. I know that's sideways on, um, but there we are. It's uh, an interesting technique going over the page like that. You couldn't possibly frame it, of course, but uh, it's fun and it's different and it passed the morning. So there we are. And I'm gonna go and tell my pussy cat to behave himself, Oriole. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications if you want to know when the next video comes up and visit us on our website, dianeanton.com and consider becoming a member of either Patreon or the YouTube membership system, um, both of which start at around about 2 dollars and uh, they have various different perks. So maybe you'd like to explore that if you've got a spare minute or two. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon, everybody. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>